Friends, it is now more than a month since we last met in New Delhi to discuss the food situation. The food position has continued to cause the deepest concern to all of us and that is why I wish to speak to you again on the subject. I do not want to go into the statistical or economic explanations of the causes underlying the present crisis. We have to face the situation as it is today. The shortage of food grains has caused serious problems and whatever may be the reason, the government have to increase the supplies to the people. As an immediate measure, the government have no alternative but to import cereals from abroad and as quickly as possible. Despite the fact that we are short of food grains exchange, we are doing everything possible to import food grains in the shortest possible time. It is regrettable that the wheat crop last year was poor and we are in short supply of wheat also. But under the aid program of the United States, supplies have been stepped up substantially. Some time back, there was a punching of ships in the ports of Calcutta and Bombay. There was some trouble about the unloading of ships carrying food grains. Quick steps were taken to remove the difficulties of the workers and the situation appears to have improved considerably. At present, there are not many waiting ships carrying food grains. I would like to appeal to everyone working in the ports to remember that food grains are vital for the community and the workers should not in any way become responsible for aggravating the present complicated situation. It has been decided to divert ships to different ports in the coming months so that there is the minimum of delay and the delivery of grains to different states becomes easier and quicker. The railways have also been advised to give top priority to the movement of food grains. Already the quota of wagons has been stepped up even doubled in many instances. As the tempo of movement from the ports quickens, the ships will also arrive more promptly. I feel that the impact of larger imports will begin to be felt by the end of this month. In between, it is essential that our own domestic production should reach consumers all over the country with the minimum of interference. The restrictions which exist on movement from state to state have to be operated without undue partiality to the needs of surplus states. All the stocks of food grains are not in the hands of the government's central or state. Large quantities are in the hands of the trade. This is natural. What is wrong is that traders with stocks should conceal them rather than bring them out into the market. The state governments have been taking action to bring out the concealed stocks. Personally, I would be happy if these stocks were freely marketed by the trade itself. But the traders have not left as much room for hope. Possibly, they fear that once they bring out the stocks, they will expose themselves and have to suffer penalties. They are surely liable to penalties. But in the special situation existing today, I would go to the extent of suggesting to you not to take any penal action against such traders. The stocks may further be allowed to sold in the open market at a reasonably price. However, after the lapse of the period of grace, firm measures will be taken as has already been done in some places. I do not want to say more about this point. Letter from the business manager Messrs. Johnson and Company, Bombay to Director, International Trading Company, London. Dear Sir, we are much obliged to your letter of the 10th instant and wish you to inform 
you as follows we are glad to know from your letter that you are looking for an agent for the sale of your goods in this country in this connection we would like to inform you that we shall be glad to act as your representative this is of course subject to a satisfactory contract that will be drawn up between us in due course for 25 years now we have also been in the business of dealing in a wide range of household goods we are also very happy to enclose a list of names and addresses of several firms in this country and america with which we have regular business dealings they would be willing to provide any references which you may require our bankers will also be in a position to provide any reference needed we hope that our offer to act on your behalf will be of interest to you if you would like to take the matter further we suggest that you ask your solicitor to prepare a draft contract and send it on to me there is no reason why we should not be able to enter into an agreement which would be to our mutual advantage yours faithfully